Everybody went to the market. If you wanted greens, you go to the market. If you wanted um, ham hocks or, or um, sausage, homemade sausage, you go to the market. If you just wanted to go wander around, you went to the market. The current market was the place to be. My history, as far as the market is concerned, goes back at least until 1961, 62, when my mother used to bring me here. Um, I was probably six or seven years old. My grandmother, uh, she was born in 1939. She was coming here when she was a teenager. My, my, my parents' parents' parents came to this market to get food, and they lived on the other side of the town. It's been a part of my family history for well over 50 years. It was always a time they came here. My, my entire family always come here. Something that they was raised on coming to do, and they raised us, and I raised my kids the same way, you know. I see the market as being a very unique place in Atlanta, so it is the only public market in Atlanta. And public markets have, um, I think, a very different spirit than some of the other um, markets that you see in town. So with public markets, they really do focus more on locally, on local businesses and reflecting what's distinctive about the community. This was just a big meeting place like it is now. But it was a lot more busier then. People were everywhere. The way that the market got started was in 1917, there was a great fire of Atlanta and about 200 acres of land was cleared, um, which was quite devastating to the city. And um, in an effort to revitalize the area, farmers started to congregate where we are right now at the Sweet Auburn Curb Market, which was then the epicenter of the city. And so they sold their livestock, they sold their produce, and the market became very, very popular. So it was an open air market um, that caught the attention of the Women's Club of Atlanta. And so the Women's Club launched a campaign to raise money to build a permanent location for the market a fireproof location for the market. And the building was uh, opened in 1924. And so it's the original construction where we're sitting you know, today. There was a time, of course, when um, black farmers weren't able to sell out of the market. They could buy out of the market, but of course they sold outside. But I understand more folks bought off the curb than came in the market. So they affectionately kept that name, the curb market. It's really the city market. It's really the municipal market. But there is nobody in Atlanta, I think, that would know what you meant if you said the city market. And the way that the name kind of shifted from municipal market to Sweet Auburn Curb Market is that the market is located one block off of Auburn Avenue. Now, Auburn Avenue um, in the 50s was a very thriving area for um, for black Americans. So it consisted of a lot of small businesses, but as, just as importantly as that, there were three lending institutions that gave loans to black people when it was difficult or when they were unable to get loans in other parts of the city. So because Auburn Avenue was doing so well financially, it was dubbed Sweet Auburn. It has, actually it was it used to be called the wealthiest street in America for African Americans. Auburn Avenue, and the Sweet Auburn District was really the first black mecca in Atlanta with the market being 50 feet away, you know, from Auburn Avenue that it also changed and evolved with the Sweet Auburn District. Well, I remember Edgewood, it didn't have a lot of the reputation that Auburn Avenue had. The biggest thing was this market right here. As a matter of fact, this is one of the I think only businesses on Auburn Avenue that kept its strength. I think this market is still a pinnacle or either the heartbeat of this area. It's a, a standing foundation for a lot of people around here. Uh, a lot of businesses around here. This is the oldest market here. What I remember most about the market is that, um, you know, the place was always crowded and Unfortunately, it smelled a little bit of dead meat. Yes, I used to come here when I was a little girl, and I used to hate to come in here because of the smell. But see, during that time when I was coming in, the downstairs is where you could get your hogs, your pigs, 
your chickens and stuff like that downstairs. So probably in about 1959 and 1960 when I came here, when people bought chicken, it was alive. You know, you could smell the blood, I hate to say that. And you could hear the chickens fighting for life, you know. But we never did go down there, but we know what was going on down there. Actually right around here, in this area, because we used to come in the front, the door at Edgewood, and I can remember you would come down this way and they would have live pigs, which was hogs, and they would have live chickens in cages. And if a person wanted chicken, they would um, pick a chicken, uh, break his neck and drop him in a big old barrel and he'd run around, die, and then they would pluck the feathers off. Uh, back then, they used to have hog parts hung up behind the counter uh, that I remember. Uh, I was always amazed at uh, these hogs that I would look up at and like, Grandma, do you see that pig hanging up there? She was like, yeah, that's what we're getting. We're getting part of some of these pigs. Coming out of the, the 50s and the 60s, there wasn't as many places, a variety of places, I think, that people could go and shop, um, particularly in this area. At that time, we had a lot of farmers that actually worked here at the market. That's pretty much who ran the market. Uh, we had local farmers from middle Georgia, south Georgia, and when these guys would price things, I mean, it was almost like you're going to an auction or uh, it was almost like, let's make a deal. <laughs> some, some farmers came in just to, they just had meat counters and they would sell everything like the old guys say from the rooter to the tutor. They would sell everything, pigtails all the way to pig snouts, mountain oysters and the whole nine. Customer base had two components. One were people generally from the neighborhood who that was their shopping center. But there was also a significant portion of the customer base that came there for unique products that they couldn't get anywhere else in town, like a whole pig, like chitlins, like frosted collard greens. So they would come from all over the Atlanta area to shop the market. You can find things here. When you go to another store, when you go to a grocery store, you probably is not gonna um, find, you know, just like they got herbs, different kind of little roots and things. You know what I mean? You get a chance to see a whole rabbit. You get a chance to all the You get it's, it's different things you don't find. Just coming back now is so different from what it was like when I was a child. If you come here, it, it makes you feel like home. And a lot of these people in this community look at this market as a home. It, this is my home away from my home. <laughs> this is a part of me. This is a part of uh, my upbringing, you know, and, and, and I guess it, with my mother taught me how to be a good shopper today. So this, this curry market is a landmark for many things. You meet, you greet, you see different people every day. You know, it's always constantly changing and evolving. So it's never boring. Uh, it's never routine, you know, um, but uh, it is the same place that it used to be, although not. <laughs> it's still that same place, but uh, quite different these days. 